We're joined in studio today by Sizwen Sasana, former CEO of First Rand Group, now calls himself a social entrepreneur, uh, doing interesting work uh, across the country. Uh, Sizwe, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. You've just come from speaking at the uh, Chikalulu Serious Social Investing Conference uh, that's run with the First Rand uh, Foundation, uh, where I believe you were talking about the importance of investing for social impact. What was the gist of your message? Well, the gist of my message was really about the private sector working with civil society and partnering with government to drive systemic change. Uh, I think we are in the early stages as a country of that kind of movement because typically uh, companies as social, corporate social investment has just been focused on companies doing projects and maybe doing programs, but you know, really just working on their own. And my own experience is that in those kind of situations, what, what, what it is good and companies are making a difference, it's extremely difficult to actually drive larger systemic change that may improve social service, especially in areas such as education, health, and just you know other social services. And therefore, if we work together as businesses for starters, which is also very difficult at the moment, and stop working in silos, and work with civil society, we may actually have much bigger impact. And I've seen examples of just uh, the two programs in which I'm involved, or initiatives in which I'm involved, uh, starting with the National Education Collaboration Trust, which was you know, created in 2013, started operating in 2014. It's already starting to make a huge impact in, in how government operates, from strategic you know, issues to to just um, you know operational issues and so on, uh, because there's a collective which includes business, uh, civil society, including the unions that are working with government to improve the education outcomes in the country. The second one that I've been involved in is the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, where just in the last three months, uh, following the hashtag fees must fall, uh, we started working with particularly the banking sector in strengthening the capacity of NASFOS, of National Student Financial Aid Scheme, uh, to just improve its operations. Whilst we're looking at new ways of doing things and, and hopefully with government, creating a new model which is going to fund students, including those that come from mis, m middle income families. Excuse me, you talk about this aspect of, of uh, systemic change and working with these sectors, across sectors, to, to work on these big issues. Yet we often hear businesses complain and say, that's not my core business. I don't know about social development and systemic change. You've lived through both of these worlds where you've been in, in corporate South Africa. You're now doing this kind of work. What is your message to those business leaders? My message to the business leaders is that, you know, business exists not only to just generate profits. Business also exists to make sure that the environment in which they operate is sustainable. And that can only mean that, you know, you get involved as a company in addressing some of the fundamental issues that we face in the country. And in any case, the National Development Plan, the NDP, uh, calls for active citizenry which says government can't solve all the problems that we have in the country by itself. It requires civil society, the private sector, unions uh, to work together with government to improve uh, some of the social issues that we face in the country. And therefore I would appeal to leaders of the private sector to get involved, and they're already involved in, by a large measure, especially through corporate social investment programs. However, my own uh, you know, sort of conclusion has been that whilst that is good, you know, you're not likely to change the lot of a lot of people in the country that continue to face problems of poverty or unemployment. I've heard you say that uh, businesses need to bring the, the social issues in line with the executive agenda. Um, we know the likes of Michael Porter from Harvard, the strategist talks about shared value and, and leveraging supply chains to create shared value. What are some of the key ways that businesses can engage with social issues? How should they be thinking about that engagement? Well, they must think about those issues just from the point of view, for instance, how business operate. Because in any business, you're going to have customers, you're going to have suppliers, for starters. And, if you're, and you're going to have employees. And if any of these three are out of sync because there are social problems that affect, for instance, how customers may buy your product because they may be poor, or how your employees 
may be incentivized, may be engaged in work because maybe they come from backgrounds that are really difficult. It means as a company, in fact, you're getting less than your fair share from your key stakeholders, who may be your staff or your customers or even your suppliers. And therefore, by getting involved in social issues, you may improve the sustainability. You are going to certainly improve the sustainability of the business. Whilst at the same time, you improve levels of engagement of your staff if you're dealing with issues that positively affect staff, or you improve you know, your business because you've done something about improving the lot of your customers out there. You've spoken about your work with the Education Collaboration Trust uh, being the chair of the Student Financial Aid Scheme. Um, a lot of people worry about this issue of education, the youth bulge, and the need to rapidly address uh, not just the education issue, but the consequent uh, employment issue around the youth in our country. Do you think we're doing enough? What should we be doing more of to address these issues? The solutions lie in the different stakeholders working together because social issues are complex by their own nature. You know, because you can't simply say, for instance, you're going to throw money at the problem and that's going to solve things. You can't also say you're going to train people and that's going to solve things. You can't say you will provide food and that's going to... You need a holistic solution to social issues. And they take long to address. Therefore, companies need to take a much more pragmatic approach and, and be a little bit more patient in dealing with social issues. Uh, because, you know, companies are used to seeing profits. Maybe uh, you get reports every month and you, you see quarterly reports or maybe half yearly reports. Social issues are a lot more complex. And therefore, companies need to adopt a different approach in terms of how they engage with social issues. And the kind of outcomes and maybe success and what success may look like in social issues is not the same way as how you look at success in terms of a business. My last question is more on a personal level. Uh, you've made this journey from uh, one of the big banks, uh, sort of the high echelons of corporate South Africa. You now find yourself uh, perhaps spending your time and energy and effort working on these social issues. What have you learned as a leader uh, from an ethical point of view, from a personal, vocational point of view, how have you changed as you've gone through this process? Well, there are similarities in working in the social environment with working in the private sector or business at a certain level, but there are also major differences. Uh, so, you know, they're similar in that you work with different people uh, and you learn, I continue to learn and grow as I work, especially now as a social entrepreneur. Uh, but at the same time, you need to understand when you operate in the social environment, you deal with people of all walks of life, with people that may be uneducated, doesn't mean they're not leaders, they are leaders in their community, in their society, and you need to be able to really take your ego or your position and check it at the door when engaging with social issues and listen, and listen more than you talk, actually, in, in, in being able to come up with solutions, not by yourself, but with people that you interact with. Sizwe, you're an inspiration, and uh, we wish you luck with the good work you're doing. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.